Hello friends, in this video we're going to look at this Leader LMV-185A 2 channel AC millivolt meter. My brother picked this up at an auction years ago and it sat on the shelf and I haven't tested it. And actually I have a use for it in some of my plans to measure speaker performance. So this is a good opportunity to blow the dust off of it and see how it works. So looking at the front, we've got an analog voltmeter here, obviously. We've got scale ranges in terms of dB or millivolts. That's just a matter of what you read off of the meter scale. Power, range button, channel 1 input, and channel 2 input and with this red pull separate that's the center knob with this center knob it looks like you can either gang the two together or uh, use them separately I'm going to spin it around on the back I've got the power cord choice of floating or circuit ground this is a chassis ground we got output 1 and output 2, so there's probably an internal amplifier that will output these signals amplified according to the scale. Maybe so you can look at them on an oscilloscope or something. We'll try that out. Fuse. The serial number plate here. Nice convenient carrying handle. So I've looked at these on eBay. They have some value and uh, this is one that if it's in good condition or I can easily fix it uh, I might have to give it back to my brother to claim his earnings with so next we'll plug it in and try it out so as our very first test we'll try out this kilowatt watt meter put it into watts mode Showing zero right now with the unit off. We'll turn it on over here. Two point six watts after it settles in. So that's a reasonable value for something like this. We've got our channel one input light on here. I guess there isn't a light for channel 2. Meter is pretty stable. Bouncing around just a little bit. I don't have uh, anything on here yet. We'll try that next. So for channel 1 I screwed on this type in connector that I have that goes to an RCA plug. I noticed that the meter is kind of picking up what's probably stray voltage noise off of the cord. I'm going to touch the end and see that move around. Okay, I'm going to short out the cord which should reduce the pickup noise. Okay, as expected. So that actually is a pretty good sign that it's pretty sensitive in picking up something. It's on the most sensitive value right now so we'll go to so that's supposed to be 300 millivolts I'm guessing when I take the short off of the cable we won't see much there okay there's more than I thought touching the unit with the uh, my finger with the with that so that actually is a pretty good sign that this is working so far. Next I'll try putting in some audio into it from my cell phone and we'll see how that comes out. So I plan to hook up my cell phone as a uh, audio source for this to kind of check the voltage and frequency range of it. As a check I'm, uh, I've hooked up my other voltmeter to make sure that there's no sort of AC or DC coming out that shouldn't be on the input. So that's 
DC showing essentially nothing. AC showing about 117 millivolts. That might even track with what we've got here. We won't take the time to work that out now, but uh, it's an interesting science question. I've got my cell phone set up for a 100 hertz tone and an output level that reads at 150 millivolts on this scale. And the way we get that is we're on the 300 setting, which is uh, this lower one, 0 to 3, 100, and then 50, maybe just a hair over there. Now on the oscilloscope, we're reading down here, 155, 156. So that seems to be quite accurate. I'm going to turn this level down to something less than 100. So that should be 50 millivolts on the scale which is about what I'm getting over here. We'll go down to the 100 scale. So we read off the top of this line and it's showing that just a hair over 50, so I'd call that uh, 52 maybe. We're showing 54. So that seems to be quite accurate relative to the oscilloscope. Let's see if we can go down even farther. I just pick something at random there. I'm going to do the auto setting on the scope. We'll get back to that. Let's go down to the 30 range. So we're back on this 0 to 3 scale, but interpreting this as uh, probably 6 millivolts. Here it's kind of too noisy to read, but maybe about 4 or 5 or 6 there. That shows an advantage of the analog meter, which is the mass of the meter movement keeps it from wobbling around too much due to noise and uh, you can get kind of a of an average off of that so to speak so I'm going to turn our level back up here to something bigger we'll go to this hundred scale again so that should be reading the hundred scale looks like about 70 two or so. See what we get over here. 73 and 73. So that's pretty good. Now I'm going to change the frequency and see if the um, voltage level changes here. Let's go to the 300 scale. Going to crank this up so that it gets to about 150 again. And checking that over here, we're seeing about 150 over here. So I'm hoping that as I change the frequency up to the known range of this phone, I know that it goes as far down as 30 hertz. So we'll try that without changing the volume. Still at about 150 here. And I also know it goes as high as about 4 kilohertz before it starts to roll off at all. So we'll just pick about 4 kilohertz. Still at about 150 here. So to push this all the way to its frequency limit, we've got a lot of roll off here which is showing by the needle going down but you can also see that on this display so I'll go to the let's 
Let's go to the 100 millivolt display here. I read about 92. And here I read 92. So that's very encouraging. It tells me I can use this over the audio range that I'm hoping to go for. Next we'll look at some of these higher voltage ranges. I'll test that by putting my phone through an audio amplifier to get some slightly higher values. So I've hooked up to the channel 2 input. I've got with the help of the preamplifier about one volt going in. I've adjusted to 1700 Hertz. It's just an arbitrary figure. Using this preamplifier, this is an ADCOM preamplifier I've had for many years at full volume. So it looks like the way this works is channel 2 is red, as in red knob, red light, and red needle. So I move this to the 3 volt scale here, back here. We use one for the red needle. I didn't realize at first that this had two different needles. So evidently black goes with channel one. As a matter of fact, let's just try that. We'll switch to channel one to the same settings. So these knobs control the two channel ranges separately. I'm gonna pull this off of channel two so we should see the red needle drop and when I put it back on channel 1 we should see the black needle jump up so it looks like this takes a little interpretation as far as how to read the settings and the needles and so on but once you get good at that it makes sense and it's uh, it's accurate and it's going to be a a good addition for some of my uh, audio frequency response measurements that I hope to do in future videos. So as another test I've hooked up the output on the back to this AC voltmeter and I suspect that this is going to be proportional to the needle deflection maybe scaled to one volt or something we've got approximately point four seven eight and we're at half deflection so I'll turn the volume down on the preamp so the needle dips and we're on about twenty percent deflection point one eight here now I'm going to change the range to 1 volt so the deflection here goes up to about 60 percent and I've got 0.582 there so kind of as I had guessed the AC output appears to be essentially the percentage reference to 1 volt 0.58 of 1 volt, 58% of full scale. And we'll try that same experiment with channel 2 to make sure that the channel 2 output circuitry is working correctly. So I've changed over to channel 2. I'm at about 20% deflection here. And switched the leads on the multimeter. 0.185 again on that. So we'll go up in amplitude here to get to full, oops, can't quite get to full scale deflection. So we'll go back down to here. I'm pegging. So I've adjusted things to be about dead even on the one here. We're getting 0.94 showing on the voltmeter here. So that tells me that the channel 2 output is working correctly. Another feature we can show you is the indicator light. I've got 
red pulled so that and it goes green when that pushed together again everything is on track here so we'll leave it there on this video hope you enjoyed it if so please consider giving me a like and a subscribe if you're not already a subscriber thanks for watching and bye bye